In this lecture, we're going to talk about communicating the results of data analysis. Presenting the results of your analysis is recognised by everyone as crucial, but it's hard to offer guidelines that apply across a vast number of potential scenarios you might have to deal with. Generally, the goal with visual representations of data is simplicity and clarity. Simple things like not having crowded graphs, having labels on the axes, having titles and using obvious colour schemes while remembering that a surprisingly large number of people are colourblind are all good things to remember. Basically, try to avoid producing anything that looks like this. This pie chart is trying to show the number of screens in every cinema in Ireland. Think about what a better way to present this data would be. When it comes to what you say or write, always keep the audience in mind. Are they experts or novices? Do they want to hear the details or are they only interested in the results? Do you need to convince your audience that what you're talking about is interesting or are they already bought in? Perhaps there are some things you like in these videos which can help guide you when you're making your own. Even if you hate all of them, that should also help you to know what to avoid in your own presentations. Here's an example of a written presentation of data. I don't mind criticising it because it's from a report called Presenting Data People Won't Ignore. And I think this is a superficially clean looking page of a report that has at least three glaring flaws. The first, in my opinion, is the image. Why is the image of the man on the iPad there? What is the purpose of it? What is it adding to the document? Next, the text is broken in such a way that it's not obvious if I should read the text in the lower left or the upper right first, or perhaps they're unrelated. Additionally, about half the text in the bottom left paragraph is emphasised. If you emphasise too much, your emphasis loses its impact. Thirdly, the authors want to include an example of a bad and a good way to present data. The bad way is the table you can see in the figure, whereas the good way, in fact, is on the next page. I think this point would have been much more effective if the two methods were placed side by side. This is the next page, and it certainly is the case that the figure in the top left is better than the table on the previous page. However, even in the original document, the labels on that are so small that they're basically unreadable. The page also shows some more things which I would avoid, like the random speech bubble. For some good examples of data communication, have a look at Hans Rosling's lectures. Rosling, shown here, is a Swedish statistician who unfortunately is now deceased. He's famous for his enthusiastic and beautiful lectures, using a combination of detailed data, clear and powerful visualization techniques, and a unique presenting style to tell stories. He has an entire website and software system devoted to producing clear visualization of World Bank data, and he's also a big fan of physical props, as you can see here. However, I think it's the storytelling aspect of his presentations that make them compelling. When you present your results, try to think about the story you're trying to tell and how data can help you to tell it. In a similar vein, the profession of data journalist has taken off in recent years. Initially, news organisations mainly used data to predict election outcomes. Probably the first example of computer-aided journalism being the American broadcaster CBS, who, in 1952, used a mainframe computer to predict that year's presidential election after the disastrous reporting on the previous election. Since then, the use of data journalism has exploded. The Guardian's data blog, for example, was launched in 2009 and is a great source of data-driven stories. Have a look at some of the articles on there for inspiration about using data to tell stories. In the last 10 years, interactive data visualizations have also become more popular. These can really help engage users with the data themselves and let them get a feel for what's going on in a way that just reading or listening can't achieve. There's a delicate balance here between having too little interactivity and too much. The classic example of maybe too little interaction is a supposedly interactive map where clicking on a country just tells you the name of the country and some statistic. Is that really interactive? The other extreme is assuming the user knows anything about statistics and providing a huge number of analysis options that require some expertise to use properly. Once again, Hans Rosling's work stands out as a beautiful example of interactive data visualization. Have a look at the tools on Gapminder or the Dollar Street project on the same website. In my opinion, the way to learn to present data effectively is to first learn what not to do from people who do it badly and scour your own work for bad examples. Then watch and read good data-driven presentations from people who already do it well and copy what you think works. And finally, practice makes perfect. Whenever you get the opportunity to present, take it.